Hello everyone. I have many strange hobbies just for the soul. For example, collecting transistors produced in the USSR, collecting incandescent bulbs of interesting shapes, and flashlights. Flashlights from different periods have been repeatedly restored, modified, and of course collected by me. I even made separate videos about some of the samples. I highly recommend checking it out. Here's an interesting flashlight used by American cops, the Maglite 6D. This is a Batten flashlight in a fully metal design, the longest flashlight in the world after the Maglite 7D. There's nothing special about it except for its length and the fact that it's also a self-defense weapon. A few years ago, our Chinese friends from the company Immolent released what was, for a long time, essentially the most powerful handheld flashlight on the planet. That was mass-produced. And the name of this beast is the Immolent MS-18. I repeatedly requested this model from the company, and each time there were issues with approval and delivery. Eventually, this topic was somewhat forgotten, and I had already come to terms with the fact that I wouldn't have the most powerful flashlight. Someone might say, why don't you just buy it? It sounds simple until you look at the wild price tag of 600 to 700 bucks, depending on the configuration and delivery costs. The actual price from the manufacturer is around 500, 40 dollars. But for that kind of money, you won't be able to buy a new flashlight in full configuration, including delivery. The minimum I found was 575 bucks, not including customs duties. Of course, there are some crazy people who are willing to shell out that amount for a flashlight. And yes, you're currently watching one of those crazy people. On New Year's Eve, I came face to face with the Immolent MS-18 on WB. I closed my eyes, turned off my brain, and clicked buy. Don't pay attention to the currency. I'm from Armenia. It's important to note that neither the Immolent company nor the store where I bought this flashlight are sponsoring this video. In fact, this video is not an advertisement. So, the Immolent MS-18 is something that can turn night into day. The most powerful flashlight of all time with 100,000 lumens, unless you count that Immolent outdid themselves and made the MS-32 model with 200,000 lumens. And technically, the MS-32 is currently the most powerful. But there are a few buts. The MS-18 is an iconic model made with luxury richness and great reliability. Firstly, the new flashlight seems to be twice as bright. But in reality, it's not so straightforward. Because the light intensity of the 18th is 460,000 candelas, and the 32nd is not twice as much, but only 655,000 candelas. The LEDs used in them are the same American Surix HP 70.2. The first model has 18 of them, and the second, in theory, should have 36. But in reality, there are 32 diodes. There are no significant differences in beam range either. The MS-18 reaches up to 1,350 meters, while the 32nd reaches 1,680 meters. Another downside is that in turbo mode, the MS-18 can shine at 100,000 lumens for a minute, while the MS-32 can only provide its 200,000 lumens for 45 seconds. In terms of cost, the 32nd model is 100 bucks more expensive and has the bonus of being able to charge via Type-C using the power delivery protocol up to 100 watts. So why did I choose the 18th? By analogy with other things in this world, I believe that subsequent versions of a popular product are simply a marketing ploy made up out of thin air. The most important argument is this. We know for sure that the flashlights use CREX HP 70.2 LEDs. The maximum power of each diode is 29 to 30 watts, and the luminous flux is 181 lumens per watt, provided there is binning, meaning careful sorting. In total, 5,250 lumens per diode, or an average of 4,300 lumens. Taking this into account, at least 137,600 lumens and a maximum of 168,000 lumens under ideal conditions in the case of the MS-32. In the case of the 18th model, the percentage of lumens will be higher because, again, there are more diodes in percentage terms. To be more precise, that's at least 77,400 lumens and 94 and a half thousand lumens under ideal conditions. And the claimed 100,000 lumens in the MS-18 is more believable than the 200,000 lumens in the case of the senior model. Undoubtedly, the senior model is more powerful. And considering the relatively small extra cost, I think the model is relevant if you need an autonomous search spotlight. 
Of course, there is such a concept as overdriving LEDs by applying currents to the chip that exceed the manufacturer's recommendations. Both the power consumption and the light output increase, but not proportionally. And as a bonus, you get rapid degradation of the chip. It's like putting a turbocharger on an engine that's already operating at its limit. Unfortunately, many flashlight manufacturers resort to this in pursuit of lumens. Of course, there are many aspects I don't know, and I don't want to speak ill of manufacturers, I'm just stating facts from technical documentation. And in the grand scheme of things, how many lumens per watt, what kind of LEDs, nobody really cares. These flashlights are bought for the wow effect. And believe me, the flashlight will definitely handle this task. After all, it shines like dozens of car headlights. All of the above, as you might have guessed, are my feeble attempts to justify buying the junior model. Well now, let's really get started. Emolent MS-18, the most powerful flashlight in the world for many years. 100,000 lumens, almost 460,000 candelas. It is equipped with 18 ultra-bright CRX HP 70.2 LED arrays. This monster is powered by 8, 21,700 standard lithium-ion cells with 4 amp-hours each. The beam range is up to 1,350 meters. It weighs 1.9 kilograms. 7 operating modes plus a turbo mode at 100,000 lumens. The runtime in turbo mode is 1 minute. The runtime in other modes is shown in front of you now. Protection class IP56. This means some dust may get inside, but it won't affect the operation. Also, theoretically, it shouldn't be afraid of water jets, but there are open fans here and I wouldn't take the risk. The device comes in a relatively premium case. I would say it's a whole chest, which, besides the flashlight, includes a 19-volt 2-amp charger, a manual, a couple of spare ceiling rings, and a branded strap. This is the entire package of the flashlight for 600, 650 bucks. Thank goodness, the locks are metal. To make everything look luxurious, besides the metal locks, there's also a sturdy handle. The case itself is covered with faux leather. I predict it's made of thick cardboard, though it could have been made of wood. Inside, there's foam probably lined with Alcantara, and that's where the premium feel ends. But overall, the case is solid. Before turning on the flashlight for the first time, you need to unscrew the battery pack and remove the insulating plastic. Next, unscrew the rear metal cap and charge the battery. It will take a long time to charge. Also, before using, don't forget to peel off the protective film on the reflector glass. The battery pack is completely sealed, with no access to the cells. The threading is wide and solid. Lubrication is present. The contacts are substantial, both on the battery and the flashlight, and have a thick gold plating. Regarding the round charging port, this solution is more reliable than Type-C, and nothing stops me from taking, for example, a Type-C trigger at 20 volts and soldering a wire with a round charging connector to the trigger's output. In this way, the flashlight can be charged from any power supply that supports fast charging protocols. Of course, Type-C is more universal, but in terms of reliability, again, the round, one rules. In general, the battery pack has limited repairability, so it would be unfortunate if the connector breaks. You'd either have to open it up yourself or buy a new battery, which costs 250 bucks. 250, Carl, and that's at the official dealers. At other dealers, I think it will be no less than 300. Let's move on to the technical aspects. The flashlight is equipped with an OLED display with a single multifunctional control button. Different combinations allow you to lock the button, turn on the fans without turning on the flashlight, and change operating modes. There is also a memory mode. The button is backlit with two white LEDs. The display will also show the battery charge level and voltage. After turning on the flashlight, if you press the button once, by default you will have a low mode at 700 lumens. Next, if you press and hold the button, you will cycle through the modes increasing up to 60,000 lumens. If you stop at any setting, the flashlight will remember this mode and will be in this mode the next time you turn it on. If you press the power button twice, magic happens. Turbo mode is activated, and you have the full power of a light beam at 100,000 lumens in your hands. Just don't look at these lumens hoping to gauge how bright it is. You could easily damage your retina. In this mode, as I already mentioned, the flashlight can operate continuously for 60 seconds, not because the battery can't last longer. No. The fact is, even with the presence of two, Powerful turbines, the head of the flashlight heats up significantly, sometimes so much that you could get a burn. 
To make it clearer, here's a real-time thermal imaging video. There is also a strobe light that activates if you press the button twice in turbo mode. In a flashlight with 100,000 lumens, this mode can be quite useful in combat to disorient an opponent or aggressive animals. And it will work very effectively. Five consecutive presses activate the button lock. To unlock it, do the same thing. If you press and hold the button, the button backlight turns on. Turn it off the same way. In terms of construction, the flashlight is good. Everything is made of aluminum. The LED radiator fins are made of copper. Of course, it's a bit heavy and impractical, but it's not meant to be practical. And if your hand gets tired, just throw on the strap and keep going. How bright is 100,000 lumens? Uninformed people, upon seeing the tests, might say that their Chinese flashlight for a couple of thousand rubles shines farther and brighter, not understanding the difference between floodlight flashlights and tactical ones, where all the light is concentrated into a narrow, long-range beam. These are two different things. Unfortunately, it's impossible to convey brightness through a camera, but it can be done with numbers. Of course, the tests are purely demonstrative, just for understanding. In all tests, the camera settings are the same fixed with all auto modes turned off. The room is like the bathroom of my workshop 6 square meters, with all lighting completely turned off. A lux meter is installed 1 meter away from the lamp, with its sensor directed at the white ceiling. To start, let's turn on the lamp at a thousand true lumens. On the lux meter, we see about 40 lux. And finally, the Emelent MS-18, and I have never seen such bright artificial lighting. On the lux meter, we see a reading of 30. But it's not 30 lux, as many might think. Pay attention to the multiplier of 100, and here everything adds up. It is almost 100 times brighter than the lamp at 1000 lumens. These tests, of course, are not enough. definitely super bright, but not like in the advertisement. I specifically asked a friend to film with a fixed ISO value, so that the light would appear as it actually does to the eye. How long will the battery last at maximum brightness, considering the flashlight won't allow this mode to be activated for more than a minute? With such minute intervals, the charge will last about 6 to 7 minutes. It's easy to verify this. We set the voltage on a powerful laboratory power supply to an average of 16 volts. This is the voltage of an almost fully charged battery. Next, we start the flashlight in turbo mode and see a current consumption of 61 amps. The lab power supply can't handle it, and the voltage dropped to 13.8 volts. Therefore, the power is around 850 watts, and the battery is rated at 92 watt hours, which barely lasts 6 to 7 minutes. By the way, regarding the energy 92 point something watt hours, is also not very clear. It seems like it's an AKOM 4S, and it's stated that there are 8 Samsung 40T cells inside, each with a capacity of 4 amp hours, and that, no matter how you look at it, is about 115 watt hours. A few words about the flashlights at the end. Such powerful devices are extremely impractical for household use. Big heavy, and pointless. As I mentioned earlier, they are bought solely for the wow effect. And the company itself kind of hints at this. It's a different story when used as a searchlight. Here there are about 800 to 900 LED watts, and it's very, very bright. On the other hand, 
A minute of operation in turbo mode and generally short battery life make this in similar flashlights, useless for relatively long search operations. So it's still about the wow effect. And indeed, everyone I showed this flashlight to either said, wow, or described the same effect with colorful language, but overall it was clear that they were impressed. For everyday use, a flashlight with a couple of thousand lumens is more than enough. Here's an example of how a flashlight with a thousand lumens shines. In its bright. And here's how the light from a flashlight with 4,000 lumens looks. And that's already excessive. Turning on 100,000 lumens, for example, on the highway, you could cause a serious accident with a possible vendetta, and hanging out with such a thing in the city is also not the best idea. Its brightness is more than enough to blind anyone for an extended period, possibly with consequences. In other words, in an unfavorable situation, at the very least, a black eye is guaranteed. But going out into nature, especially in winter, to shine on mountains, lakes, and rivers is just right. It can be used as a source of heat. You can easily start a fire. Of course, in the pursuit of power, you can make an even more powerful flashlight at home, whether using the same LEDs, xenon, or even an incandescent lamp. But undoubtedly, all these things will be larger and heavier. Was this purchase worth it? Never ask this question to someone who has wanted something even if it's pointless, for a long time and finally got it. In reality, it will be turned on occasionally, often in the company of close friends, just to show off. Otherwise, forgive me, Emelink Company, 630 bucks down the drain. But still it's cool. Usually, I take apart the gadgets I review, but this flashlight is made elegantly, without any play or seams. I'm afraid I'll scratch something or won't be able to take it apart or put it back together. So I apologize for that. Maybe next time. With that, another, hopefully interesting, video has come to an end. In the video description, you'll find all the necessary information, including links to my two other electronics channels, where videos are released much more frequently than here. Don't forget to comment on the video and share it with your friends. Well, I'll say goodbye for now. As always, this was Kazyanov K, with you, and until next time, bye.